bookworms! Today I'm here with my video for my top five summer reads. So these are the top five books that I read between June, July, and August. Um, I've been doing these at the end of each season and I just think it's like a nice way to kind of wrap up what your favorites were of the season um, instead of having to wait until the end of the year for like a top 10 list or something. And also then I can sneak in more than 10 books, which is kind of nice. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. First, I have a book that I read in June and that is The Geek's Guide to Unrequited Love by Sarvanez Tash. I adored this book because, well, I adored it for many reasons, but it takes place at New York Comic Con in New York City at the Javits Center, which is like my home convention. Um, I've been going to New York Comic Con for years and years and years, and this was such a realistic portrayal of the convention atmosphere. Um, I loved the story. I thought it was super adorable. It followed a guy and his best friend who's a girl, and they have tickets to Comic Con for Saturday and Sunday, but they don't have them for Friday. And then their favorite author, who is very reclusive, all of a sudden makes this announcement that he's going to be doing a panel there. Um, and it's like his first public appearance in so long. So obviously they're dying to get tickets to this event. And if you've been to any kind of New York Comic Con, you know that it is really hard to to get into panels and everything because it's always chaos. Nothing goes according to plan. So um, they're doing everything that they can to get these tickets. Graham is the main character and he is in love with his best friend Roxy and he's planning on telling her at New York Comic Con but he is trying to find like the perfect way to do so because he just wants everything to go like according to plan and obviously not gonna happen because life. But this is like heavily inspired by John Hughes movies. It had a to like the total feel of that kind of thing. Um, I would love to see this adapted into a film because it was just such a great story and I felt like it sent a really good message and I could completely relate to all of the different fan things that Graham and Roxy went through during their chaotic weekend at New York Comic Con and like everything in it was just so true and so Right. And I said um, in my in my review, just so people know, um, there is a diner that is mentioned in this book that the characters eat at at one point. And that diner did exist, but unfortunately it got purchased like within the last year and it's being turned into a high rise luxury building like every other building in New York. But that actually was a diner that I would eat at every New York Comic Con. So it was really exciting to just like see all of these places that I love represented in the pages of this book. It was really, really good. It was such a great story. I loved it. I five out of five stars. Absolutely wonderful read. Please pick it up. Then another June read that was a favorite of mine of the summer was Highly Illogical Behavior by John Corey Waitley. This book follows a boy named Solomon who is suffering from um, agoraphobia and that is the fear of leaving your house. He had an incident that happened in middle school and ever since then he has gotten like progressively more scared of leaving to, well, until he gets to the point where he has not set foot outside of his house in three years. Then there is this crazy girl, Lisa, who who, who thinks about him and develops this whole scheme of trying to help him and make him feel better so that she could use that experience to write about for her college essay because she wants to go to school to be a psychologist, which is super unethical and like not something that anyone should ever do. She was absolutely out of her mind insane and um, she made a lot of really bad choices in this book. But Solomon was such a great character. He was so relatable and he's hilarious. Like he was definitely one of the funniest characters that I've read about this entire year. Um, he just is not like what you would be expecting from someone that has, that is suffering from agoraphobia. He like, he's just such a funny person and I could definitely see myself being friends with him and he loves Star Trek. His whole garage is um, modeled after the holodeck, which is really cool. Um, but anyway, he forms this friendship with Lisa and also with Lisa's boyfriend. And as we all know, three can be a crowd. So there are things that happen and different situations arise. And um, it was just a really, really enjoyable and thought provoking read. And I really, really love the story. I really love Solomon. Um, and I really love this book. So this was another five out of five star read for me. Then in July, I read Vicious by V.E. Schwab and this book was so good. Um, the Archived and Unbound are still my favorite of Victoria's books, but this is definitely like second on my list or third if I'm going by not series. So this book follows um, a villain and a hero, but 
it's very difficult to determine who is who. Um, there's Victor Vale, who is seen as the villain of the story, but it is really kind of the hero. And then there's Eli, who is his college roommate, and um, they both decide to experiment um, about trying to create their own EOs, which are extra extraordinaries. Um, so they put themselves in these life-threatening situations in order to um, develop powers. So it's just a really interesting read because it really puts you into the mind of someone that is like a villain and but is also like fighting for something that is kind of good. Um, so it was really interesting. I loved the way that it was told. It it was one of those stories where um, it told you what was going on in the present, but it would also flash back to the past. So you'd get to live those events as if they were currently happening. And I felt like it gave you a much better understanding of the characters and their mindsets. And it was just a really fascinating read. Victoria is just a phenomenal writer and I love everything that she comes out with. So there's no surprise to me that this was one of my favorites of the summer. I actually, all of these books are five out of five stars that I am showing you. So I can even stop saying that now. Then I read... A Torch Against the Night by Sabatier, and I, I actually also read An Ember in the Ashes during this time, but I decided to go with A Torch Against the Night because I actually liked the second book better than the first book, um, which was surprising because I really, really did love the first book as well. The reason that the second book really resonated more with me is because my favorite character got their perspective told. So it, it continues the story from where An Ember in the Ashes leaves off, and I don't want to say anything about the actual plot of this book in case you haven't read An Ember in the Ashes, but it is inspired by um, Athens and Sparta, which is really cool. So it's like militial and um, there is this whole like fantasy world and it's just really cool. It's really well told. Um, and there are so many twists and turns and surprises in this book that it was just such, such an enjoyable and fascinating read. And I was just like totally enthralled the entire time that I was reading it. I really, really loved it. Five out of five stars. And finally, the last book that I read in August is also the last book to make this top five list, and that is Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Moss. This is the fourth book in the Throne of Glass series, and this is by far my favorite book in the series so far. I loved everything about this. This book is 650 pages and I wish that it was longer because I was just like dying the whole time that I was reading it and there were so many things that happened. I have a character that is one of my new favorites now. I like this was just so action-packed and there was so much going on and I feel like it made some like major, major strides in the plot. So now I'm just dying to get my hands on the next book because this one left me like wanting so much more. I don't know how people read this last year and had to wait all the way until now to get Empire of Storms because I never would have made it. I'm so thankful that I waited on this one. I loved this one so, so much. Like we're, there are no words to describe how much I love this book. I'm, I'm like amazed that I loved it so much because there were such mixed opinions, but I thought it was so great. So again, five out of five stars. Uh, give me more Selena and yes, cannot wait for Empire of Storms, which comes out tomorrow from when I'm filming this video. <laughs> so those are the top five books that I read this summer. Um, I'm really excited to get into fall reading because I feel like I have some really great things lined up on my TBR um, and I definitely am looking forward to jumping into Empire of Storms like as soon as possible. Um, and yeah, I just... <sighs> just love reading and books and everything. So let me know what some of the best books that you've read this summer are, and maybe I'll also add those onto my TBR because I'm always looking for great books. Um, and if you haven't read any of these, I definitely suggest that you do. Um, they're very, I feel like it's a very different mix. I've got a couple contemporaries here and an adult sci-fi-ish book, and then two fantasies and like all of them are just so great. So yeah, that's all that I have for this video and I will see you guys soon with a new one. Bye!